In every country, it is advised that the politician leading the government in power chooses qualified politicians to serve in his or her cabinet as ministers, and not just dishing out portfolios to friends randomly without regard for their educational background and how their degree would tally with the portfolio. A strong reason why this is done is so the country would have qualified ministers versed in the ways of their portfolios who would make the right decisions based on a legitimate understanding of what they have to do, and not based on assumptions or guesses of what needs to be done. That is why it is important to get only the qualified to fill designated portfolios. But it seems the rule is lost on Trudeau because that man surely didn't consider how qualified his party members were before he started handing out roles. And what was the effect of that? A collapsing Canadian economy. Now, I am not saying that qualified politicians who, if given the roles, would have saved the economy from certain danger, but at least they would have done better than this current crop of politicians. Because it is one thing to know what to do and decide not to do it because of a corrupt nature, and it is another thing to have no idea of what you are meant to do as the minister of a particular department and instead rely on assumptions because you are too proud to ask your subordinates in that department for their expert advice. Trudeau, being who he is, failed to consider this when he was putting his cabinet together and look at us now, scraping for food, lamenting about an imminent collapse of the housing sector. I mean what economy relies solely on real estate to survive. But can we say we expected better from Trudeau? The Prime Minister himself was a teacher before he joined politics, and he wasn't teaching economics or a business-related subject at that time, no. Trudeau taught drama. Let's look at an example of Trudeau's epic failure as Prime Minister in choosing his cabinet. And that example is Christian Freeland, the Minister of Finance. In every economy, the Minister of Finance is as important as the Governor of the Central Bank because they are the two government officials whose sole focus is on making the economy of the country strong enough for as long as possible while the central bank governor makes fiscal policies that affect commercial banks and the people's spending power, among other things. The Minister of Finance is tasked with the duty of finding a balance between government spending and the burden on taxpayers. The finance minister is the one who presents the federal budget to the parliament and oversees the actions of the government concerning money. Such an important role means that the finance minister would be the most suitable politician to advise the government and the head of government on what to and what not to spend taxpayers' money on. The Minister of Finance is something like a lease that holds the government from entering a spending frenzy, and to do that effectively, the minister needs to be financially savvy. I can tell you for a fact that this is a quality that Freeland lacks terribly. At a time when experts were pointing out the mistakes of the government that had led to an all-time high inflation and was leading to an economic crisis, the government kept saying that the inflation experienced in the country was due to what they called a global phenomenon. And by that, they meant the war in Ukraine. And why not? Everyone else was blaming the war between Russia and Ukraine as the reason why their economies were plummeting and Trudeau, who never admits that he is wrong when he is, followed suit just like he follows the World Economic Forum like an obedient pup. It was only after the arguments of these economic experts were sustained that the government agreed that Canada's problem was from within to an extent. In her own way of combating the situation, Freeland unveiled what she called an affordability plan which was actually the government spending $8.9 billion on programs she said would put money in the pockets of Canadians. Now to show you what I have been talking about for some time now. If this woman was truly versed in the ways of money, she would have known that additional government spending cannot help curb inflation for Chris Aix. This is simple economics 101. Pumping money into an inflated economy is the last thing such an economy would need to become stable. And yet the Minister of Finance does not know this. What made this worse was the fact that the writing had been put on the wall by economic experts for her to see. But for some reason, she either didn't see their advice or chose to ignore it. Whatever the case, her plan is well and truly bad for the economy, and it is frightening that this is coming from a whole finance minister who should be leading the cabinet in matters of finance. When Tiff Macklem, the governor of the Bank of Canada, was under fire for worsening inflation in the country, Freeland came to his rescue, condemning all who criticized him and terming them economic illiterates. But that is another thing with this crop of liberals. They put party loyalty above common sense. It is obvious that Freeland had only supported Macklem because he was appointed by Trudeau, and condemning him would seem as though she was directly opposing Trudeau's decision. So instead of taking the right stand and condemning him, which would have put him on his toes, she chose not to so she won't get into the bad books of her superior, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Pathetic. Though she packaged the affordability plan well to make unsuspecting Canadians think that Trudeau's government was finally on their side, the truth remains that the government would be sending more money back into circulation, and that is bad for an already struggling economy. Meanwhile, a group of Scotia Bank investors lamented the inaction of the government in reducing government spending. This is exactly what I am about. 
You have people who know the in and out of the country's economy and have their intellectual foundation built around finances advising a seemingly unqualified finance minister for free, and yet Freeland ignores the consultation. The investors also complain that the government's frequent and unchecked spending was a major reason why the Bank of Canada was hiking interest rates in a frantic effort to save the economy. This made it look like the fight against inflation was one-sided, in that it was only the Bank of Canada that was making efforts to curb inflation while the government looked on and worsened the situation where necessary. A report by the Scotia Bank investors argued that if the government could reduce its spending, then there won't be any need for the Bank of Canada to increase interest rates. It has been said and agreed that Trudeau's government has spent more than any government in Canada's history. His government created a $327.7 billion deficit in the fiscal year 2020 to 2021 and a projected $144.5 billion deficit for the fiscal year 2021 to 2022. This man just keeps entering the history books for all the wrong reasons. I dare say that we are well and truly doomed because an analysis of Trudeau's government shows just about that. Out of the 39 cabinet ministers in Trudeau's government, only five hold a degree in economics and they are Jean-Yves Duclos, Marie-Claude Baibau, David Lametti, Bill Blair, and Jonathan Wilkinson. You can see that even the prime minister holds no such degree in economics. Going forward, only 10 out of the 39 have managed or owned small and medium-scale businesses at some point in their lives, and four had degrees in business administration. 14 ministers have the experience of working in higher positions in business before venturing into politics. On the flip side, 11 have degrees in law or studied the subject at the university, and 6 have degrees in journalism and media. It is in this last part that Freeland falls. We are in real danger here, people. At a time when citizens of countries around the world are looking to their governments to provide the financial muscle to combat inflation, we have to turn to degree holders in law, journalism, and political science to save our economy from entering recession next year. Great job, Trudeau. What are your thoughts on the cabinet Trudeau has in store to combat inflation? Do you think Freeland, the Minister of Finance, would rise to the challenge of bringing the economy back on track? Tell us what you think in the comments section down below. Your likes and subscription go a very long way in keeping the channel alive, so please leave us a like on this video and subscribe if you are new or you haven't. You can also turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on any of our videos. Thanks for watching.